Hi everyone and welcome to this video lecture on anatomy and brain development. This is the first content-based video lecture of the Neuroscience for Mental Health Professionals course. In this video lecture we're going to be exploring some pretty dense, uh, important, but, but really packed content from the chapter that you've read. I'll also be uh, adding some additional pieces that I'm going to be covering in class and kind of clue you in as to what those are. So that'll be the focus of these um, kind of video lectures is to help prep us for the in-class lecture and also help you to review what you've read and get a sense for uh, what piece of information are most important for you to know. So in this uh, part of the module, module 1.1, we're going to be exploring the hemispheres of the brain the right and left hemisphere. We'll also look at the lobes of the cortex. There are four main lobes, frontal, occipital, parietal, and temporal. We'll look at the cerebellum and the brain stem. The cerebellum is that cauliflower looking uh, uh, structure in the brain, sometimes called the little brain. We'll uh, examine the cranial nerves and pay particular attention to cranial nerve 10, sometimes called the vagus nerve. We will examine the subcortex and the limbic system that houses the structures associated with memory and emotion, among other things. You're probably very familiar with the amygdala and the hippocampus, for example. We'll then explore the nerve cell, also known as the neuron. We'll learn the different components of the ner nerve cell, how it functions. We'll learn about neurotransmission, how one nerve cell communicates with another, how messages are sent through the nervous system. Then we'll look at long-term depression and potentiation. This has to do with the birth and death of neurons and also of synapses. Then we'll explore neurotransmitters specifically, such as you know, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, those kinds of uh, important neurotransmitters that we need to know about. And we'll learn about polyvagal theory and Siegel's, Dan Siegel's hand model, which are both important I would say applied theories of neuroscience that uh, are based on research evidence but are not pure research-based theories if that makes sense they're more conceptual in scope so here are the four lobes of the cortex that i had mentioned it's worth knowing the function of each of these lobes so for example you should know the frontal lobes are associated with motivation planning inhibition and language expression so you should know the function of each of the four areas. In terms of the cortex, we're going to explore different parts of the cortex that are important, such as the prefrontal area, and that's of course associated with executive function, planning and control, sometimes called the CEO of the brain. We also are going to learn about the insula, which is a very important co component of the cortex, the anterior cingulate cortex, and the posterior cingulate cortex. I'd mentioned the cerebellum, that cauliflower-like structure in the brainstem. Both the cere cerebellum and brainstem are very important structures of the brain that you'll need to know about. We'll learn about the subcortex and the limbic system, learn about the different components, such as the thalamus, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus. We'll learn about the uh, role and function of each of those. Then we'll move to looking at the nerve cell, the neuron, the different parts of the nerve cell, for example, the axon and axle terminal buttons versus the dendrites, you know, what, what is the myelin sheath, what role does that have? We'll learn about electrical conduction and action potential. This is foundational to neurotransmission, how a signal is sent through the neuron so that it releases neurotransmitters and communicates with the next neuron through a process called signaling. Then we'll look at neurotransmission and what's happening. So we'll look at inhibitory neurotransmitters, excitatory neurotransmitters, the binding process, and also reuptake. Well, um, I had mentioned going to explore specific types of neurotransmitters as well. We'll look at excitatory types, serotonin, glutamate, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine. We'll also learn about inhibitory types, GABA and dopamine. There are other neurotransmitters, of course. Those, I would say, those six are the ones we're going to spend the most time on in class. And here is a graphical representation of them. 
those six that I had mentioned. We're going to focus on Siegel's hand model to kind of round us out in class. This is a nice um, conceptual model of helping a client to understand the way that their brain is functioning and talks about the three areas uh, the, of the triune brain that I had mentioned um, in our first lecture together. It of course has limitations, it's a fairly simplistic model, but it is helpful for a client to be able to understand the relative functioning of different parts of their brain. So we'll learn about the Dan Siegel's hand model, which comes from interpersonal neurobiology, which is a kind of theoretical approach to neuroscience. We'll also learn about the polyvagal theory of Stephen Porges. And that'll round out our first video lecture here about um, anatomy and, and, and physiology. And in class, we'll spend plenty of time going through each of these concepts in a lot more detail. I just gave you the kind of broad overview of what you need to know and what we're going to cover in this week's content. All right, I'll leave you here and uh, see you in class.